guys so this is definitely a different video that I am making usually when I am making autism videos as many of you know um, it's usually about my 10 year old son Noah who has autism today we aren't going to talk about Noah I mean we'll talk about Noah a little bit but um, mainly it is going to be about Alexander who is my youngest and I have vaguely mentioned things here and there about an autism evaluation. I'm making this video for two reasons. One reason is for my regular viewers to kind of be updated on what's going on with their family. But in this video, I am stripping that all down and I am going to talk about it with you guys. Again, I'm seven months pregnant, so I may get a little emotional, but I don't think I will because this isn't a video saying, Alexander has autism. Um, this is a video saying Alexander could very well have autism. Um, the doctors in the Tampa Bay area that we lived and now in Jacksonville, they both agreed that they're seeing some a lot of red flags, a lot of high risk in him. So that is why he is going through a second autism evaluation in a couple of weeks. But I'm also making this video because whether Alexander has autism or not, um, he has signs of autism and I'm gonna go over with that with you guys. Um, so this video isn't saying he does or he doesn't. He's doing an evaluation. We're gonna let the doctors make that decision. But I feel that this will be informative for any parent that might have a two-year-old just like Alexander that is maybe wondering the same thing. Um, now, just because your child has these signs it doesn't mean your child has autism or if they don't have these signs, it doesn't mean they don't. Um, autism is a spectrum, a range of symptoms, so it is different for every child. So let's go ahead and just kind of get into this. Uh, first, I'm going to go over the signs that we're currently seeing in Alexander and some of the concerns that that the doctors are having as well. Um, and then I'm gonna go over the similarities that Alexander and Noah have together and the differences. So first, the things that the doctor is really concerned about is the fact that he is not speaking at all. Um, Alexander can say ball, um, but that's it. Um, he at one point could say eats and he could say bites and then he stopped saying them. So it seems like if we say a word and if we say it over and over and over, he will say it too, but then he kind of loses that word in his vocabulary. So that's obviously concerning because that's, I think that's considered verbal regression. So that's really concerning that he's, he's had words in his vocabulary and he doesn't anymore. Um, he has two, he should, I think they said he should have 60 words. He should be starting to piece two words together. Um, and that's definitely not happening. Not only does he not have speech, but he has speech regression. It's speech regression, not verbal <laughs> regression. Sorry guys, I really don't rehearse these videos. So I just kind of go on the fly. Um, but that's definitely something that they're concerned about. Um, the other concern is that he's not really doing nonverbal communication. So for example, when he's thirsty, he's not bringing me a sippy. He's not um, pointing at something. If he's thirsty, maybe I don't realize he's thirsty, but I walk by with my drink, he starts screaming his head off. So I think because we've had Noah and we went through this route with Noah, that we are more like aware of things. So I'm like, oh, are you thirsty? And I'll hand him his 360 cup and he just drinks it like crazy. So it's really becoming an issue um, to a point where we are looking into sign language or doing picture cards with him um, to help because it's frustrating for him and it's frustrating for us because I don't want my kid hungry or thirsty and not be able to tell me that he is in fact hungry or thirsty. So that's kind of the biggest concerns right now. He really hasn't had developmental delay. He was a really late walker, but he wasn't a late crawler. Um, but the reason he was a late walker is because they are pretty sure he has hip dysplasia and we are about to get a x-ray, I think next month for that. So that's a completely different video. Um, it really, it doesn't have anything to do with autism. Uh, just pretty much they think my body cavity is uh, not big enough to hold such a big baby. Big babies don't run in my family, they run in my husband, so that kind of thing. So the first thing that we have kind of noticed, he used to be really social. He waves at strangers. Um, Noah did that as well. That That's not really the thing, but like he does not know how to play with other kids. Before he did though, my best friend has an, a three-year-old and he would play with her at an age appropriate level for him. So he wasn't mean to her. I mean, they got along just fine. And then it, now he does not play um, if other kids are um, 
like playing like doing blocks he'll have his own blocks and he'll parallel play where again to just a person who may not realize it it uh, looks like he's playing with them but he's really not um again i'm not saying that this means he has autism or he doesn't he may just be a kid that because he's not around a lot of other little kids because he's not in daycare i homeschool uh my other kids are much older than him then he just may not know how to play but at the same time, that would be considered social regression. He has started pointing at things, so that is a really good sign, but Noah pointed at things as well, <laughs> so that's, that's why it's really hard, and it's why it took us so long to get a diagnosis for Noah, because the like classic signs of autism, Noah didn't have. Um, now, if I point at something, Alexander will look at my finger and that's it. He won't look at to see what I'm pointing at, if that makes sense. Um, something else I've noticed, and this was the same thing with Noah, um, is that if he falls down, like almost 90% of the time, he doesn't cry. It does not affect him, uh, which is a little scary because we had a lot of issues with Noah because of that. Because of his hip dysplasia, it makes him way more clumsy and he falls down. Um, it's his right hip, so his left knee always catches his fall. And I mean, he will come to me, just walk to me and have like blood just down his leg because he scraped it and, and, and he just, it doesn't affect him. He definitely is showing some signs of sensory, but I am not surprised whether he has autism or not because I have sensory like issues, like problems in certain things. Um, for another video, but he wasn't eating when he was supposed to. Like he was a very picky eater. We almost actually put him through feeding therapy because he couldn't swallow solid foods at like 11 to 12 months old. Um, but then finally he got a hang of it, but there are just certain foods he just cannot eat. He hates pasta. And what we have learned is that if he has a routine with eating, then he has to stick to that routine. We accidentally put him in a routine of where he would have a whole waffle every morning and then I would give him a handful of Fruit Loops. One day, not thinking about it, I tore his waffle in half and he would not eat that waffle like at all. But then, but then later on, uh, one of the kids, one of the older kids didn't realize I had already tried to feed him and they got him a whole waffle and he ate the whole waffle. And so I kind of tried it out one day just to see and so I gave him a whole waffle and a half like tore up waffle and he just will not eat anything that's tore up. And I'm sorry, I'm trying to use natural lighting and it is, it's not going as well as I would hope. <laughs> so he's very picky about that. But like, if I try to give him the Fruit Loops first, he throws the Fruit Loops on the ground. So it, it seems he definitely is very rigid in his eating. He has to have a certain schedule. He does not like, oh my God, the sun's killing me. He doesn't like anything being torn up at all. Um, if I tear it up, like the waffle he's used to, so he knows that's not supposed to be tore up, but like the peanut butter and jelly, if I like cut it without him seeing it, I will hand it to him. But if I hand him a whole one, and it, it's, it, it's, it's very, very weird and odd, but we just kind of go with it. It's not that big of a deal to me. Um, if he wants to eat things whole, he can eat things whole. I don't care. He hates being swaddled. He hates being rocked. I mean, not that many toddlers love that. He doesn't really like to even be cuddled unless it's on his terms. Um, he will sometimes like reach up for us to pick him up and then he'll lay his head and kind of cuddle, but he's not a really cuddly kid. We did move him from our room to his crib at like two months old. So sometimes I think that might be the reason he wasn't the kid that had to fall asleep with us or anything like that. So he's just kind of independent. He's a very independent child. Like he's just very, he likes doing everything on his own. He doesn't like people to do it for him. And something else on the sensory is he cannot have his food together. Like any like pastas, soups, anything like that. It has to be separated. The same thing with sandwiches. He has to eat the bread. Like he separates it. Noah separates did it too, but he's a more picky eater than Noah was. <laughs> Noah wasn't that bad, but Alexander, man, he is just, he's given a run for my money. One big issue that they have in common is the sleep issues. Um, and this is around the time that Noah started to have sleep issues. It's like before age two, he didn't have any. And then once his second birthday hits, it's taking hours and hours to put him to bed. I don't know if it's just normal toddler sleep regression, but it is so, so, so difficult so difficult being pregnant. He just will not go to sleep. 
Uh, most nights he just wants to stay up and play. We have done it where we will move his nap earlier in the day. And some days that has helped, like that's helped to make putting him to bed easier. But like yesterday, he only had a 20 minute nap. It was early in the day and it took me three hours to get him to bed. I was so, so tired. Like I woke up this morning like death. Like it, <laughs> it was really, really hard. It's hard being pregnant and doing that. He doesn't play with toys. He really hasn't ever played with toys. He he likes playing with blocks. He loves building blocks. He loves like just the wheels of the cars, which is different than Noah. Noah loved cars and he loved blocks, but Noah didn't care if he just loved the car. Like Lex just like turns the wheel to the car, which is fine. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm trying to like justify being like, oh, well, it could just be like a normal kid thing. It's, this isn't easy. This isn't an easy video for me to make guys. <laughs> Sorry. It really isn't, but I didn't want to wait until his appointment. And then all of you guys are shocked and not understanding what's going on. And I felt that this would be a good educational and informational video to make. So, um, bear with me, um, on this. Yeah. He only plays with that. And then he loves kitchen stuff like vacuum cleaners, brooms. Outside he played for two to three hours with my mom's outside broom and rake all day long. So um, he loves kitchen things. So for Christmas and his birthday, that's mainly what he's getting is just like little fun kid house stuff. He just likes house stuff. So that's really fun. Noah really never got into the house stuff till he was about four or five. So it's, it's kind of cool to, to have him do that. But any other like regular toys, he's just, it's just not his thing. Whether he has autism or something else or what, even if he's just a neurotypical kid that might just have a few different things about him. We, we want him to be him. And if him is playing with kitchen stuff and having a fun time, then that's, that's what we want him to do. <laughs> kind of going back to the sensory thing. Now he does this out of like frustration and anger, and that's obvious why he's doing it, but he will randomly just bite people. He'll act like he wants to hug them and then he'll just bite their neck. Uh, it's crazy. Or their cheek. He will also uh, grab, and again, he does this when he's upset, but he just randomly does it to me. And one night, I don't know why, but I was like, this is the weirdest thing. I'm just, I had just cut his nail, so it really didn't hurt me. And I just let him do it. And he just did this and did this. And like, it's like he squeezed as hard as he could. But then when he let go, he's like, <sighs> It was like a sigh of relief. So I don't know if that's sensory or not. Noah really never did that. So I have no idea what's going on with that. But uh, some of my friends with children on the spectrum do that. So I don't know. Um, he also grinds his teeth. He doesn't really do it at night, but he does it during the day. I have no idea. It, like some resources were saying that was an autism sign. So I'm kind of putting it out there. I've never had a child that grinded their teeth at night or during the day. So I've got no idea. So those are kind of the symptoms and signs that we're currently working on. Um, again, it could end up just being nothing. I definitely feel like there's enough going on that it raises concern. When I went to the doctors both times, I did not go with, uh, concerns at all. It's the doctors, they'd ask me questions and then suddenly we're doing another autism evaluation. The first one, they pretty much just said that he was too young to make a determination. Um, this one, he will be two when they do the evaluation. It's on December 5th. So I will update and I will try to video as much as I can, but obviously my concern is going to be on the evaluation and Alexander. But as far as the differences between Lex and Noah, uh, from what I can remember, I mean, Noah's 10, um, but uh, Noah was always just really cruel to animals, especially at two to three years old. And Lex is not. Um, Lex can be mean, but not intentionally. Noah's not intentionally mean. He just doesn't know how to express that love. Lex is, he really, he can nicely pet a cat. His reaction to animals remind me of a typical toddler. He loves animals so much. He loves cats. Um, he didn't like dogs for a really long time, but now that my, we go over my mom's a lot and my mom has two big old English bulldogs and they have puppies now. So he's, he's all about dogs. So he, he loves animals. Now this could change, but Alexander seems to have less aggression than Noah does. Like Lex, ha he was social. He was really, really social 
um, with other kids. Like he could play with my friend's daughter. Uh, Noah was never really able to do that. And Noah was in daycare. We have talked about possibly putting Lux in like childcare or daycare just for socialization. But at the same time, I know enough people with little toddlers and little kids. I am looking at actually um, setting up some play dates with him. Uh, but first, I, I kind of want to conquer this because I don't want to make someone else's little kid a like a victim to Alexander. We we went to church last Sunday and they put him in a little nursery and he he was mean, guys. He was really really mean. Noah loved TV. He just couldn't sit down long enough to watch an episode. Lex does not. He has no interest in TV. He'll glance at it. The only TV he watches is toy pudding on YouTube because she just plays with kitchen stuff all day. Um he also will watch I've learned family vlogs like Smelly Belly TV, I think it is. Uh they're they're family vloggers and he watched like a 25 minute episode. He just, he likes seeing real life things like that. Noah was behind developmentally. Again, Lex really isn't anything that he's the behind developmentally. There's a physical reason. Noah also had a very low mentality, um, lower mentality than Lex does. Like he was on a much lower age level. I don't want to be like, oh, one kid's smarter than the other. But as far as like, age level, we could tell Noah was really behind. Lex isn't. Like he, I mean, he's really a smart kid. He likes seeing how things work. I'm actually thinking about getting one of those sensory boards where you can like turn the light on and off and the zipper and stuff. He just loves plugging things in. It, it It's really an issue because he's just fascinated by electricity. It's, just, it's horrible, but he loves it. Okay, so the things that Lex and Noah have alike, other than things I've kind of mentioned as going over the signs is they both have decent eye contact. Um, that was one of the things that kind of held Noah up from being diagnosed so like earlier on um, is because he had eye contact. Another thing they have in common is escaping. Um, this is a really big issue with Alexander now, um, as big of an issue as it was with Noah, so much that we are getting a home security system installed into our new home so that whenever the front or back door opens, we will be alerted. He loves the outside so much, but he just opens the door and runs, runs, runs. He doesn't care where he's running into. He always, it's almost always into the street. If he runs out the front door, it's the street. If he runs in the garage, he goes to run down the street, but then he gets distracted by the little car thing he rides in. So those are uh, definitely things that they both have in common. We are going to take all the precautions that we took with Noah just to be on the safe side. Noah had a lot of the same sensory issues like he didn't really feel pain that well, but other things he felt a lot. Okay, so that's kind of what's going on right now with Alexander. Again, I'm not saying he does have autism. I'm not saying he doesn't. Uh, there are some days I go with my gut and I look at him and I was like, no, he just, he doesn't seem like he would, but I'm not a doctor. So I don't know. There are other days where some of his, the signs of autism are so prevalent. I'm like, oh, he probably does have it. We've talked about it and we are less concerned about getting the label. For Noah, it was really important for us to get the label because Noah had other weird stuff going on. We didn't know. So for us to have a label, we wanted to know if it was autism or if it was like early onset schizophrenia or psychosis. We wanted to know that because obviously those can have different treatment plans. So for Alexander though, it's not as much a concern. So we just want to address the problems that are here and now. We want to get him in speech therapy because he definitely should already be talking. Um, we want to work with him on any sensory issues that may be going on with him and just go from there. We are in the middle of moving, so things are kind of chaotic and crazy, but I definitely don't want to leave you guys out and not update, so definitely stay tuned for that. I will um, do that. If you're new here, welcome to our channel. Um, we are a large family of six, almost seven. Um, obviously, I have a 10-year-old son, Noah, who has autism, and then I have a 13-year-old daughter, uh, almost 12-year-old son, and then Alexander, who's almost two, and I am seven months pregnant. So, 
and that is kind of us in a nutshell. We would love for you to become a part of our family. We do daily vlogs and I do a lot of informational videos on autism as I feel there's just not enough out there. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I'm so sorry this was such a long video, but um, we are going to see you next time, guys. Bye.